Gamers Nexus has apparently been flooded with similar accounts from viewers who have tried to return their gear, and a number of their followers are now pledging to boycott Newegg. Um, Lewis Rossman has apparently weighed in, asking what even happened to Newegg, who actually used to be known for their good service, apparently. I'm not American, so I never really shopped there, because by the time they opened up in Canada, I was working at a competitor, so I wasn't going to, yeah. like, shop there. Yeah. I would just walk into the warehouse and buy something if I really needed to. Um, but the response seems to be that they were purchased by Liaison Interactive, a Chinese tech company, in 2016. <sighs> All right. Who do you boycott them with? I mean, man, there used to be there used to be so many more options, man. Fries, there used to be right? fries there used, used to be, to be cool. fries. There used to be uh, Tiger Direct. There yeah. used to be Zip Zoom Fly. Uh, is M Wave M Wave still around? I feel like that's been a hot minute. Uh, you've got Micro Center. Is Micro Center still exists? Oh yeah, they're yeah. not in Canada, right? Yeah. Oh, not in Canada. Yeah. No, yeah. but in um, we're talking Americans. It in the states, yeah. Uh, Tiger Direct, LMAO. Yeah, yeah. A lot of people are talking about Micro Center in the Twitch chat, uh, in the Floatplane chat. I did a sponsored event where I'm not going to say who, but a company flew me out to go do a thing. Uh, and we were building computers. And the parts showed up late. And we were unboxing all the parts. Or I not know who unboxing, this was. but taking all the parts out. And then we realized that there was a component missing. Yeah. Um, and we had to go to a Micro Center to go pick up said component yeah it's a cool place yeah it's a really really big store like i i and i know that's like just some canadian dude in in america going like whoa <laughs> but it was huge <laughs> it was crazy and i heard that fry's electronics was significantly bigger which is which is cool i'm used to like the i mean going to ncx when i was growing up it's this little, like, tiny little sliver hole, hole in, in the, the wall, wall yeah. where you basically go up to an order desk and just get your stuff. Like, you, there's there's extremely limited browsing, if basically any. Like, the Langley location had, like, two shelf things. And that was, like, it. <laughs> then it was usually filled with just, like, cases that I assumed they couldn't fit in the back because it covered most of the floor. Um so yeah, it was a, I don't know, it's kind of a cool experience. Man, honestly, this just makes me feel like LTT stores should just be a computer store. Like, seriously. <laughs> the margins are just so thin, though. You know what? So here's a crazy concept. What if we just, what if our margins just weren't that thin? <laughs> what if we just took an extra 2% and then just had not <laughs> customer service? <laughs> <laughs> like, there's a novel idea. But I, I don't know. I don't, I don't know. I mean, you look at how price-driven IT purchasers are, yeah. right? Like, in what other space does a site like PC Part Picker even exist? <laughs> in the makeup space, is there a PC Part Picker? No. Is there a facepaintpicker.com? Oh, my right? goodness. Right, where you can, you you can make that. You can actually there go. There would actually probably be good money in that. Your lip, eye, uh, facial compound, whatever. You, like, you, you, you put in your whole regimen, oh and it tells you goodness. the cheapest site to go buy it. Like, honestly... I don't think there is. I don't think there is airline tickets. Okay, that that's you know a good what would one. Probably from actually be Navs. A, a big, big money idea. Yeah, is is like a face painting thing, where once you were done, like creating your person. Yeah, there would be like a if you buy this shopping list of products, yeah. you can achieve this look, and it just add to cart. Yeah. That would actually probably be huge. Oh, it would do great. But there's just, it's just, I've never seen anything quite like the way that oh, IT yeah. enthusiasts are driven by price. Like, I remember having this conversation with Asus one time when they came out showing us their whole lineup of upcoming motherboards for, I, I mean, it must have been Z68 or something like that at this point. Z77. I, I don't know. It was like, it was way, way back, a thousand years ago. And I was looking at it going, <laughs> I think this is madness. I mean, these are the only two SKUs that sell anyway. The Deluxe, the Pro, actually three SKUs. You got the Deluxe, the Pro, and the LX, or LE, or whatever, whatever the, the, like, the basic one is. And then you got your MATX. Nothing else actually moves in any appreciable volume, at least from our perspective. So why don't you just take those two? And this was pre-RGB, right? And I was like, why don't you just take those two? ship them in three different colors, do a blue one, a red one, and like an all black one. And like, honestly, I think that would be, that would be 
more to customers' taste. Because remember, I was coming at it from like an enthusiast system standpoint, right? So I'm, I'm looking at it going, you guys have no idea, do you, how many people choose a gigabyte motherboard for the blue color scheme compared to your product. Like, actually, I think Asus's was blue at that point as well, but maybe it was MSI and some other color. Uh, but I, I was just sitting here going, you have no idea how many people choose a motherboard based on the color, do you? Well, I, you could just say, you could have the same number of SKUs and just have a few different colors of the ones people actually buy, and I think you'd be better off. And they were like, no, Linus, you have no idea. The $3 difference between these two allows us to capture like this some some percentage additional sales because someone else will have one will undercut us by two dollars and like people will flock to it. I'm like, really? <laughs> okay. Uh. Fine. Sure. I guess that's I guess that's apparently how it works. Um, people are talking about Amazon as an alternative to Newegg, but Amazon has their own set of issues, guys. <laughs> like Let's not pretend that Amazon is some kind of saint that's going to rescue us from big bad Newegg. Good customer service, yes. Good everything else, it gets a little bit more challenging with Amazon. DFI, yeah, bring back DFI. Heck yeah, love it. Oh, that's a that's an that's an old memory. Yeah, no kidding, right? Oh, what I'd love that, it. What was that graphics card brand that had lifetime warranties? Uh, uh, oh, was it Gainward? Did Gainward have a lifetime warranty at some? Oh, BFG. BFG. Yeah, good old BFG. Oh, awesome. They, uh, were, they were doomed to fail. But it was awesome. Alden Comey says, hey, Linus, wouldn't the 2% extra margin basically be the warranties that Dell and others peddle? I mean, yeah, you could think about it that way. That is an important realization that you just had, Aiden Comel. There is no free lunch. <laughs> it's true, though. Yeah. It's true, though. A lot of people don't consider it. That same buddy I told you about that, yeah. that uh, I said mentor at, at Geek Squad or whatever, yeah. he had that tattooed on his arm. Just the, just the acronym. There's no such thing as a free lunch. It's very true. It's so true. And I, I think that there's just this expectation. Like, a lot of the times we fall victim to the monsters we've created. Why is it that, you know, you're... Why, why is it that, you know, service at this chain restaurant is so bad? Because you went there. You went to that chain restaurant instead of supporting a local entrepreneur that actually cares. Yep. That, that's why. Yep. And because the server doesn't other get paid enough. people saw you going there, so other people saw that this place is being attended. So they're like, ah, it's probably not that bad. So then they might go there, et cetera. So we, we, all, we all contribute to these problems that we, then, that we then suffer from. And, you know, things like, like I said, not being willing to pay another dollar or another $2 more or whatever the case may be means that, yeah, at some point, customer service is going to suffer. And the IT industry is notoriously low margin. There are a couple of big fish that are making the vast majority of the money in the IT industry. And their names are Intel, AMD, <laughs> only lately though, yeah. um, Microsoft, uh, who else is actually making money? NVIDIA actually makes money. Intel, AMD, NVIDIA, let's see. Is there anyone else that's, uh, I mean, I know that the guys like in Asus are making money, but it's only due to their just astronomical scale. And when you're someone like an EVGA, you know, you are, you are trying to find, you're always trying to find new higher margin businesses to expand into because I know for a fact they're not making money on selling GPUs. Uh, Apple, Apple absolutely makes money. Uh, Apple I left out because I don't really consider Apple an IT product company. They're a consumer electronics company. And I, the reason I draw that line is because they don't sell any components, if that kind of makes sense to you guys. Everything that Apple sells is already based on the user experience rather than the speeds and feeds of the component that they are shipping to you. And so they're a little bit, uh, they're, they're, a tier, they're a tier above. There's a, the there's way a that lot I would think of people of in chat just listing companies that develop software or websites. That's not the point. We're, yeah. talking, we're talking about computer IT. hardware yep. and especially enthusiast computer hardware. Yep. Because um, once you get into, you mentioned IT, once you get into enterprise stuff, margins start to kind of... Oh, yeah. Totally different. <laughs> Definitely come back. Totally yeah. different story. <clears throat> totally different story. IBM. Come on. What? what, what I, okay. 
come on, guys. Uh, yeah, IBM is a technology company, yes, but I wouldn't call them. I wouldn't call them like an IT company in the sense that we're talking about. When we say IT industry, we're we're talking about like the computer hardware industry. And maybe that's just one of those things where I'm used to using that lingo because within the IT industry, that's how we refer to ourselves. So we would talk about things like a receiver or a television as consumer electronics because they're sort of a prepackaged thing. And we would talk about software as like software and services industry. Um, so there, that's the, the clarification that I should give you guys. That's why I'm using that terminology the way that I do. Noctua, yep. Yep, Pahart, Patharti, or whatever your name is. Yeah, like fans and cases. Yep, that's a company that makes money hand over fist, as far as I can tell. They're smart. They fans, are super cases, smart. peripherals have always kind of survived with better margins. Peripherals seem like they're getting pretty tough, man. Probably. Do you see how much? Insane. You see how much a G five hundred two Proteus or G five hundred two Hero goes for now? It's like forty five bucks. Yeah, that's for crazy. like Hero Sensor. Like the tooling There's been cost. So much. On a device like in that, that space, and so many new companies coming in. Well, it's because everyone flocked to it, going, "Oh, well, there's margin here." It's kind of like what happened with power supplies. There used to be great yeah. margin in power supplies, and then everyone and their dog came in, dumped all over it. Oh, we're a fan company. We and make power tough. supplies now. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that, that happened like crazy. We put a power supply around our fan. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You're welcome. <laughs> Good job. 